Beastmaster obviously banned, but if they wanted to go for some other sort of summon heroes. I mean, the it's Enchantress rough. was really popular for a while, but it's kind of fallen out of favor with these two teams. We're not seeing anything like that. You know why I think a big a big reason why Enchantress is is strong? I, th I, I really legitimately think it's the purge. I think it's the mm -hmm. fact that if you throw all these buffs on one person, she just presses W and purges it. Um, as well as obviously her laning is fantastic. Like everybody knows how beastly her laning is. That's that's always been a thing. But it's that on top of the fact that her her purge is just so phenomenal. But yeah, anyway. it's one of the few ones that you're able to uh, you know cast on on your <clears throat> the enemies and whatnot, which is pretty nice. Yeah, not not too many of those to go around these days. To be honest, that's uh, just just Dota, just Dota two things. Just Sometimes, Dota two things. Yeah. Phoenix into Marana because you know it's uh, other than the Marana, it's it it is quite a, a good Phoenix game. You have Nature's Prophet Sprout to protect the egg. You have the tiny AOE stun. You always want to have like some sort of AOE stun to protect the egg. And then Spectre is, I would say Phoenix is a Spectre counter. Like Spectre haunts and you just press egg and then you all of the haunt illusions just get melted by the egg mm. and you have all of this AOE. Spectre is not a hero that can really hit the egg. You don't want to like pop your Manta to. To, to hit the egg on Spectre, really w waste the dispersion damage, or the uh, the other one, whatever the, the other passive is, for God's sakes. Terrible with spell names. Which Doctor can't kill the egg either. No, All right now it just looks like it's pretty much the Marana that's going to have to try to do the leaps forward. But again, you know, they've been running this. Ava was talking about how, you know, Whisper really likes to play the Phoenix, but you can also just very easily shift it depending on what they pick up to try to counter the Phoenix egg. Uh, and you can put that on Stinger. Stinger ran it in the last game. Had some difficulty getting a couple of those eggs off, obviously, because they had a couple of really good options, especially with the Jug too. But this will also make it a lot easier for them now that they pick Ooh. up the, uh, the Kunkka. And this also makes it so they don't have, I believe Faker really likes this hero as well. And the arrow Marana combo uh, with the, the X marks the spot is, is very dirty. I mean, it's hard enough, right? We saw in the first game, Papita with the ax, landing the calls immediately following up with the arrow was just super effective, but you don't want to give them any more than that. And this gives you a little bit more team fight. Um, it gives you a bit of a buff and then also helps kind of dominate the lane just a little bit more too depending on the matchup. Right, yeah, it's 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 really nice as a Marana to have uh, multiple lanes that you can roam to that have some sort of setup. Just It just gives you options in the game. If somebody's popping off, you can just go with the Kunkka or you can go with the, you know, with the with the Tiny or whatever, like hypothetically if Marana was on Beast Coast or something like that. Um, yeah, it's it, it's always really nice. Good denial pick, but also like Chris like Kunkka. This guy's a beastly, beastly Kunkka player. And... Um, it's good good with the egg as well. This is they've they have really great team fight. Uh they've good catch too. Whenever you have a tiny and this looks like it's gonna be a position four tiny, there's a bit of a delay. There's like this window where your early game is over, but you need a blink dagger before you can really contribute again. And during that window, oftentimes you can feel like you really lack the initiation to actually start fights and to to be able to you know defend towers and take towers aggressively if you're strong even if you have items you need some sort of initiation and kunkka solves that with no items he just x marks a spot somebody and it's it you know if they're, if they're within your camera you can hit them with that ability so it's a really nice like stop gap for that okay what do they need they need a they need to carry so there's would be oh they banned out void i was gonna say like void could be so good with them right now but oh okay. they go I like this Sure, I like sure. This. So I was I was thinking some sort of illusion hero because they there's not really great illusion clear on Infamous. Mm -hmm. um, TB would get dumpstered by Axe and Lane though when he doesn't have meta, and CK is a hero that can kill the Axe. Axe is not good against kill lanes. He likes to sit there and slowly harass you. He likes the carries that just want to hit creeps because he'll just sit there and, and dumpster them in melee range with his spins. So the CK can definitely kill the axe, but the problem is, for Beast Coast, you don't have great kill heroes. Like I think you, I think you have to bring the tiny to this lane a lot to get kills, or Phoenix needs like three levels, right? Like CK Phoenix, I don't see as or or CK Natrus, like whatever they choose to run as their position five. I don't see them really getting, um, I don't see them getting kills until level three, level four, and by that time, like Axe can have a chain mail, Axe can have like a ring of health, these things that make them really tanky. Um, so they'll they'll definitely need to to have uh, Schofield rotate in with that tiny at some point. 
And he definitely will. You know that he's going to be making rotations. He might even start off in the bottom lane. They might try to, I mean, it's not great, obviously, but they might try to go for like a first blood situation, considering that they do have uh, quite a lot of damage and stuns if they decide to go that way. But have to you know see what? what's... I, I think I think I think Necro. I think Necro would be okay. Never mind. Oh, oh! I should have guessed this one. I should have guessed it. I was okay. So I, the reason I was saying Necro is because there's all these melee strength hero. There's all mm -hmm, these strength big guys boys. on this coast, and so they they go with the other option, which is which is Timber. Um, this this deals with the CK. This deals with the CK, the Kunkka, all of these heroes fantastically mm -hmm. in the early game. Uh, it's not as good as a Necro in terms of the. The late game, I think Timber can definitely get snowballed on. Like if, let's say Hector gets a, a Silver Edge, like Timber can feed. The, the same thing's not going to happen with the Necro. Like Necro will always have a late game. But this is definitely banking more on like, okay, you have nothing to deal with this Timber. We think that we're going to get the items on this hero to deal with the Phoenix who can possibly kill the Timber at some point. But he's going to have such a good game that it doesn't matter that there's a Phoenix. We're just going to snowball on you. I would say on the flip side of that, though, too, like you said, they have a Phoenix. They have no real way to deal with this other than, you know, the Marana leaping forward. Um, and they have a lot of follow-up, too. They've got a bunch of AoE coming out where they don't have quite as much coming out from the side of Infamous either. So uh, I think a lot of it will come down to if Ektor has a good lane. I think that's very, very important with the CK. He does not, uh, at least I don't think he does at this point, um, bounce back if he's got to, you know, be forced off to farm. But... I don't know. I mean, it, it all depends if it goes super late or not, right? I I always think that with Hector. Um, well, I always have the thought process where it's like, oh, this, you know, he, Hector's playing some, like, Ricky. He's playing some CK. And I look at it, it's like, there's no way. If this guy falls behind, oh he's done. He can't just farm. And then somehow he farms and then is out farming somebody on the enemy team with, like, a Battle Fury. So I feel like be just because it's Hector... He probably can and will farm on CK and be the most farmed person in this game. But will he be able to win? Is the question. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I That's think, not I, very inspiring. I think it's a. I, I think it's a. I think it's a pretty hard CK game. Um, mm -hmm. just with the with the timber pick and the timing. So wait, let's see. Okay, so Stinger. Let's see, what are we playing here? So Stinger is playing five natures. Yeah, he's playing natures, and then Whisper's playing the Phoenix. <clears throat> okay, this does. I think I think this is better because in, in terms of for the for the laning of Hector, because then you're not going to have this really weak and punishable level one through three, mm -hmm. uh, because the the natures will kind of deal with that by slowly harassing. You're not going to kill anybody, but you're going to be able to play the harass game at least, which is something. Better than nothing. All right. Well, looks like they're getting into position over here for taking the top rune, bottom rune. Doesn't look like they're looking to really contest too, too hard. Do have the toss picked up on Tiny as per usual, but does have to be careful. Just gonna poke a little bit over here, and Phoenix making his way over should be able to go secure himself a rune. So it looks That's... like it's going to be an even split. Whisper should be able to grab the other rune, and the other top went to the side of Infamous. Something that Schofield is really good at, if you if you watch him play a lot, is he's he's really good at putting his body somewhere that. <laughs> we we just... literally talked about that all last game. Really? Okay. Of just the way that Schofield throws his body at people and makes he... space, makes time. Yeah. But then sometimes starts to go a little bit too far and starts doing it too often, where he starts to feed. <laughs> It, well, it's 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 this it's this thing where like he acts so aggressive that you think there's got to be like three heroes there, but there mm -hmm. but there isn't. And like if you it, you want to call his bluff, but then you're also afraid that it's not a bluff because he's so confident running mm -hmm. into you. Like he just single handedly secures that rune. And I mean, this is a phoenix. This is like one of the most garbage level one heroes in Dota. Phoenix tiny. That sounds awful. Spectre Witch Doctor can definitely fight that. <laughs> oh yeah. Scof Scofield just runs in like a maniac. And he's like, there's three heroes here, I promise. No, there's not, Schofield. Don't don't lie. I, it's a lot of it. I mean, that's it's a mind game. Dota is very much a psychological game. So, you know, it's something like you see people playing in mid. If they're playing very aggressive, it's going to almost naturally kind of make you just move back a little bit. Because you're like, why is this guy playing so aggressively? Something's got to be going on. And sometimes it, all it is is just that, you know, um, what is it too? Like the uh, the Maori do the, the haka? 
right? It's it's this like sense of bravado, like where you see people being very aggressive and in your face and just your natural instinct, you have a fight or flight instinct. And in some cases, you know, you're just, you, you fly away. You don't want to deal with it. You're like, oh my God, it's too early in the game. I don't, I have a spectral dagger. What can I do? Can, can I say for the record, if the Zyori started doing the bravado to me, I would, <laughs> I would look at, I would look at them and I would think, wow, that's endearing because all I see is Reddit posts about how they're doing it when, you know, somebody passes away or to recognize, uh, you know, France's first uh, memorial celebrate. They're always doing it to celebrate other people's cultures and stuff. Voodoo so they... restoration level one? Yeah. Th yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is pretty common. This oh. is like a recent, r relatively recent trend that people go for. You literally just press it and leave it on. Heals the wave, lets you push, lets you get level two first. No, that and, makes sense. Uh, I just I ha I had yet to see this actually. Yeah, this is this is a Euro Euro strat right there. Mm. That's like a puppy or no tail. <clears throat> Let's see how we doing? Hector's not doing too well. I mean, it's one minute in, so harsh crowd. Oh. Yeah, hard to hard to really judge, but kind of expected against Axe Marana. This is a pretty strong lane. Lots of harass from these two heroes. You always have to be worried about getting arrowed too, especially if you're Stinger on the side here. Mm -hmm. They've been very good about landing those. Skullfist's taking so much damage, actually. He's got to be a bit careful. Just happened. Thinking probably trying to maybe throw someone underneath the tower, but... I was going to say, I feel like Stinger him. can die. Yeah, he's... There it is. He's just sitting too low. They might be able to turn it back around though. They've got Michael here and he doesn't have any leap charges left. One more hit. Body blocked by the creeps though. Nope. There we go. Man, those creeps. That's un that's unfortunate. Mm, I think he would have been able to maybe get away if he hadn't gotten blocked at the last second. I think you're probably you're probably still okay with that though because the whole the whole time Papada's just been smacking creeps in front of his tower. And uh, you do get the first blood and it's also a solo kill for Michael. So he's 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 feeling pretty good right now. He's a man of harass though coming out from the sages prophet, especially against Morana, who's a little bit squishier. Of course you do have to be careful though that she can just take down one of these creeps on you. Like that. But you know, it's keeping it her fairly busy off to the side. And there's a kill though in the bottom lane. Uh Alright. Yeah, so they just gonna excel and they get the courier kill too. They, they they basically just ran in and tossed tossed Excel back and uh, slowly ran him down with the Phoenix spells. Heal wasn't enough to heal through it. Maybe if he if he had the level two heal, it's possible, but still, two armor hero taking right clicks. Phoenix tiny. Both of these heroes actually do quite a bit of right click damage. Phoenix, 65 plus two damage at level three. He's got good strength gain. That's true. Stinger was getting chased a little bit here in the top lane. He's got to be careful to have that battle hunger. We'll draw back, though, over here onto Michael, but there's only so much that they can do the follow-up, though, with the Chaos Bolt, so Stinger will go down. Michael most likely, though, next to go. Again, getting blocked over here by uh, some of these creeps and trees and whatnot. Not a friend of nature, this one. Looking at this lane, you'd think that Hector still has the passive that isn't a percentage chance crit because he keeps walking in and... Okay, Chris Luck dies in the mid lane. KXY gets a solo kill. Timber I'm versus Kunkka. I'm not surprised about that. Yeah. Attack. Not surprised you just, about that one. You you do three whirling deaths on a Kunkka and he dies. So. Yep. It's it's a it's a rough lane for Kunkka. I've seen I've actually seen Kunkas do the creep cutting against this, but he can't do it anymore. It's literally been removed from the game until five minutes. Oh. So. Man, if Michael was a crazier player, I think he would have tried to stick around and try to get that kill, but... <laughs> yeah, Chris Luck, he's really struggling over here in the mid lane, especially when you consider that there's an arcane rune over on Faker. Has his soul ring now, too, so yeah. that means he, he, can, he can just keep spamming this whirling death. You have to be so careful if you're Chris. What does Chris Luck do here? Does he just try to, like, go off and, and jungle? Because he... It's it's very dangerous for him to uh No, you 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 need somebody to defend the tower. I think at some point when Chris gets some levels, you'd like to not die and then Whisper can take the lane. 
Hector gets arrowed on the top lane. Oh no. Yep, oh, he's gonna he's get taunted. held into place. All of this creep. And man. one more leap forward. Oh, you can see that they thought about putting the Nature's Prophet up there to save him, but instead, Seeger goes, grabs the rune. And Hector's Two having points. such a difficult time. Yeah. Chris Mirana Luck's Axe. not having the best either. He's, uh, does have the X over here on Faker, but Torn didn't come through. And Excel turning around the corner, which is he was probably a little bit close to this camp, but it doesn't matter. They'll be able to go find a second kill over on Chris Luck here. But and this is with the Siege Wave, too. We're gonna get the tower. Almost, almost certainly. I think you would need to mount a full defense. Really, the only hero that can deal with the timber right now is Phoenix. And I say right now, that's actually wrong. Phoenix is only level 4. I, I don't think Whisper has the levels to deal with timber. I think nope. literally nobody can deal with timber. They would need to basically 5-man to this. And that is one of the benefits of having a timber saw. I'm surprised they didn't try to make more moves on Picasso as soon as they knew that Excel was over in that mid lane. This is a solo specter sitting at level 4. They might have been able to make something happen, but... Shockingly common strat, actually, to sack a specter, because this hero is surprisingly good at coming back, even if you die here. Toss back. Oh, but they're knocked right together. This is looking very bad. Schofield's gonna fall. Because, no, they should be able to get the final hit off here. He's gonna burn to death. Can they actually? No, he's still alive. Sitting at 20 hit points, he's actually gonna still... Oh, my word. All right. <laughs> Oh, no. I can't. That's not good. No. Ector, At least top though. lane. Yeah, Ector he's trying to break kill. some ankles here, but they still have... Nope, there's the dunk coming out from Papita. Oh, man. It's a glimmer of hope in the eternal darkness of this game that Hector at least gets a solo pick off on the Marana as he's getting dove. It's not just a straight-up Hector feeds as well. Gets a kill. Not bad, not bad. And Papita has just been doing so much work with this axe. And I think, like, the combination of him and Michael together is just so good. Because of the way that they managed to move and always managed to find an arrow immediately after the call. They've just been on fire. Yeah, two second stun duration on a level one stun, like, in the, in the Berserker's call is, uh... There's, there's not many stuns that have that long of a duration at level one. So it's, it, it is really great setup for the Marana, although you wouldn't think. It, it's a weird combo, but it does it does work extremely well. Faker sees Chris Luck. Got the Chakram on him. Just needs to get a little bit more damage, and he just goes right on in for that click. Chris Luck is just getting washed out of this mid lane. It's a great timber saw pickup. Yeah, this is, this is the point where basically you avoid the timber and you just try to delay his pushes as much as possible because he, he doesn't really hit towers too quickly and then you just get whisper his spirit vessel which he's actually quite close to he almost has it he's trying gold. to bait Picasso so badly here he has the egg he's trying to get the flame spirits down so that way he can bring him close to the tower and he takes too much damage but god's not taking the bait chris luck though makes his own rotation down they're hunting a specter let's have her level six up but Peter finds another kill on Ektor in the top lane. This is he, he just he he can't he can't be up here. That that was a kill with Excel, so it's you know it's much easier setup to have the cask into call into arrow. I think that's probably right. why he was playing so aggressive up here. He's thinking, okay, I just need to stay away from the axe, but with Excel's rotation. Because they're sacking the Spectre. He, he doesn't need to be bought. Because they're just saying, alright, Spectre will come back with these haunt kills. Mm -hmm. What does Chris Luck do? Because he's been forced out of his lane. He's died uh, three times now to the Timber Saw. He isn't managing to find himself any sort of pickoffs. Oh gosh, and Ektor can't go anywhere near Faker at this point. Faker's to be level 9. Very, very powerful. And they go and they find themselves yet another kill. Stinger. He's trying to do a little bit of jungling. No breathing room allowed here at all. Boobies. Boolies. Boolies. Nice one. Uh, I think. I, I think you need to put a ward down and then cut the wave and mm -hmm. just basically avoid the timber every time he runs at you and eventually you get dewarded, but maybe like two to three minutes of that. And you can have the vessel on Phoenix. Phoenix needs to, to get a kill though. Like Whisper needs to kill Excel or something like that because he needs this, this charge of the vessel. I don't think having high levels in the Sunray or Fire Spirits will be enough to kill KXY just yet. Like he, he needs the vessel with charges. 
Baker coming to the bottom lane. Spots out Whisper. We'll just Icarus dive away. Might need to help Stinger if he decides to keep going, but no, looks like he'll back off. They'll just go, they'll grab up the runes. But this ter timber saw is just too scary. Let's see, how close are we to our vessel? 100 gold, and then Whisper's got it. Just uh, evasive maneuvers until then. Blink Dagger picked up now for Pepita, so it's about to get a lot scarier. You can imagine he and Michael will be moving around the map together in tandem. I like that Papita went for this Blink first build. Like, small items into Blink because he's got a Timber mid, so this hero's gonna run and stand in front of towers and, you know, be Im impossible to kill, but he doesn't doesn't really do anything, you know? Like, you need your Playmaker to be your offlaner. And the way to make Axe a Playmaker is to get this Blink. So this is 100% the right build. And he's smoking immediately with Excel. Whisper thinking he's fairly safe here because he doesn't have any clue that Pepita's coming forward. There's a jump forward. There's not going to be an egg for you, Whisper. You are just going to be sliced and diced. Whisper being just a little bit too... sassy there. I don't think he expected that, though, obviously. The arrow, not going to quite land, but Tinker's just taking too much damage. He should pop to the Malediction. He's going to try to get home in time, though. It's very close. It's only a level 2 Maledict, so... Uh, that's that's why he's fun. He's, he's Gucci. Mm -hmm. Feels like Chris Luck has been flirting with the Spectre this entire time, but I don't think he's got enough to kill her. In fact, he could definitely get killed by Picaz. In fact, that's what's happening here. Arrow gets tossed out. Leap forward, got the torrent. It's not gonna land. Chris Lux just died. I'm not sure what his plan was there. He has the boat, but the, the timing of that was just... He couldn't... If, if he turns around to press the boat, I think he just dies to Pacas. I mean, he just died to Pacas anyways. Did I just get you to mispronounce his name? God damn it, Jenkins. <laughs> Baited you. <sighs> So mad at you right now. Don't talk to me. <laughs> okay, sorry. Ooh. Look out, Axel. Look out. Follow up with the Sunray. It is, of course, just for position five, but toss up into the air. Stinger will finally collect himself a kill. Look at Papita, though. Oh, look at him! Ooh. Every day comes out with the chakra, with the yo-yo of death going right on through. Woo! <laughs> Down they go, and it looks like Schofield doesn't get taken out in that initial engagement, but definitely just gets chased down. What oh a call. my god. What a call. Excel. Papita God. The greatest bait of all time. Papita says, you will not die in vain. I will make your death mean something. Oh, and now Stinger is also dead. He's fine. Yeah, he looks so real. Real okay. He's so negative, Moxie. He's so negative. God, they are all. Look at this timber saw. He is just a threat. And they, they do just, have the vessel, though. They do have the vessel. Thank God for that, because otherwise he would have just run right back in after them, I think. In fact, he's still considering going right back in again after Ector. Drops the chakra. Let's be careful, Scofield's here. Let's go. Let's we'll throw out that chaos bolt. But they really can't do much. If he had a little bit more mana. Chris Luck taking a lot of damage here from Excel, but looks like a follow up with the X marks the spot. Chris Luck should be absolutely fine. He starts hitting. Oh, but they just go on through with Pagat, and this is looking like a very dead Phoenix. Down goes Whisper. Schofield is left high and dry here as they're just gonna chase him down, blink him to death, and Pagat tries to get the final hit. It's gonna go to Faker. Oh my God. You can see glimmers. Glimmers of hope here with the, you know, they, they do have a lot of damage on Beast Coast when they do put their heroes together and they do isolate one target, but unfortunately that target every time has just been Excel and he's a position five and doesn't really care. God, Pepita's just playing with his food now. Stinger runs around in circles, gets a couple hits off, he's gonna let them run. Nope! It's gonna be Pepita who gets the final hit. Doesn't even dunk, that's a waste of mana. No 60 dunk mana? No way. Right click. And then he's just gonna go bottom again and just start running at them. This, the aggression coming out from this infamous team, especially uh, Pepita, has just been insane. 
He has been... I want to know what the kills per minute are at this point for this guy. Look I almost up. feel like if if you want to make Smoke Axe breaks. work... No, goes up on the eye spot. Schofield hiding over in the corner. Baker says, oh, don't worry, I found him. The toss is right back again. That was very elegant. Excel will run forward here immediately. Gets a couple of these bounces off with the malediction. Michael forced to run away, though. They have the spirit vessel. Poor Pepita cannot blink yet. He's going to miss out on this. Goes forward. He's looking for Schofield. Not going to be able to get the dunk off. Arrow gets thrown out. Whisper's already Icarus Dovin away, though. He wants it. Don't quite connect to those trees. There's not a lot of trees left over here anyways, thanks to Phoenix. There's going to be the pull forward, though, and they just drag right back. I think Hector maybe misplayed that just a little bit. They'll follow up with the call. Press the team is here into the arrow, into the malediction. The dunk doesn't quite land, but it's going to go down. They'll follow up with the boat here from Chris Lux. This is not looking good for him either, though. He's just slowed down by the truck. He has not had a game. Kupita just does not care. Gets the call. Neil's Neil. Why they call GG. Okay. With the tier twos up, they call GG. Uh. What a stomp! I mean, infamous. They just they 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 last picked this timber. The timber lane went exceptionally well. It wasn't just you know. A good timber, a good timber lane. Like the guy killed Chris Luck solo three times in a row, took the tower on the very first siege, the very first siege wave. I like the decision of Infamous to sack a Spectre. That is mm. not an easy decision to make. I, I think ninety percent of people would would be very mad if they were a Spectre and and they're getting sacked. It's like, oh, I'm the late game hero. Well, if we make our axe extremely strong and we win the CK lane. He, CK is never going to come back. This hero doesn't farm, like you were mentioning. If right. we win this this timber lane, well, timber's going to snowball, and then Spectre will eventually have the space. It's like you're, you still are the late game carry, but it's just that your early game is not going to be supported even remotely because the other heroes are going to make the mid game so good that it doesn't matter that the Spectre's early game is bad. And uh, that, that's an interesting call, and obviously it worked out in this game. Like, Pacus didn't have to do anything. He could be any hero, and they would have won that game. He could be a Crystal Maiden, and they would win. <laughs> That was really impressive, though, the way that they they made their lanes just work out. Like you said, you know, it's a lot of faith in one another, too, knowing, okay, Pacas is going to have some trouble. Um, but we know, like, Papita played out of his mind here. 805, every time that there was any sort of engagement, like you saw him, he immediately would get his kill, TP down to the bottom lane, get a couple more kills, help out with the team fight, push. Just very, very active. And, of course, you know, Faker on the timber salt. The timber salt pick was just perfect. It yeah. was just so good with everything that they had going on there. Um, and it just was, it was too hard for Beast Coast, unfortunately. Although I, I was a very early GG out. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Uh, is this, is this lower bracket? No, this is upper. Okay. So, so they dropped to lower where they're going to meet up, I think, eventually with Thunder Predator. No, they play sure. against crazy. They'll play against crazy. Okay. So, you know, it's a, uh... Sure, they just they want to play more games, I guess, you know? I think, I, I feel like they need to, they need to like have a chat about uh, probably drafting in, in particular and, uh, you know, keeping up with what the the current meta is, the current trends, and maybe taking a page out of other teams' books and, you know, putting it putting it into theirs, something like that. I, I imagine we'll see them later today and, uh, and they'll look, They'll look solid again. This is a team that obviously has a lot of experience going between series and, and adjusting things. So I feel like that's all this was. That they GG out because they know that they need to adjust before they're going to have any chance to win a game. And so it's like, all right, well, we, we need to talk. Let's just let's just get out of here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they were showing very good signs of life over during the group stages. So looks like, you know, Infamous Gaming, they just had their number. But I mean, if you had told me like a month ago that infamous was going to be up against quincy crew in the upper bracket finals i would have been like no no way no way you're crazy you're you're having a dream or something like that but they've shown so much improvement in the last month it's incredible to see so they're going to continue here in the upper bracket face off with quincy crew on another day but uh beast coast they're going to be making that lower bracket run so we are gonna shift gears though now congratulations going over to the side of infamous for taking the series 2-0 but uh, i believe the next match we have coming up is team brazil versus thunder predator which should be a really fun match to watch so we're going to take a short break and when we come back we'll have the next series of the day for you.